It's the potty mouth safe space for balancing daddy duties and creative careers. Let's get into it with artists, creatives, and business pros that have similar hardships and victories in fatherhood. It's the Creative Dad Pod, hosted by five-time Emmy-winning videographer, documentarian, and one-time daddy, Adrian Huerta. On this episode of the Creative Dad Pod, we welcome published photographer, artist, and archivist Art Mesa. The lowrider enthusiast lends his craft to the lowrider culture, as well as the gente that comes with it. His experience seems young, but the accomplishments are up there with vets. We're talking the City of LA Archive, celebrity commissions, multiple art exhibits around the country, movies, and book publications. Chicano Soul thrusted himself into the fire of art and business with his collaboration on the 10-year-old cultura classic, Low Writing. His art is helping define a culture that is as American as apple pie. With outside efforts to keep our books, photos, art, and culture suppressed to extinction, Chicano Soul prospers as an activist creating for the sake of a genuine history. And on top of all that, he's a daddy and co-parent, father to three and grandfather to one. Please welcome to the pod, the man with the Chicano Soul, Art Mesa. Art Mesa, Chicano Soul, more known as Chicano Soul, um, amazing handle. Um, welcome to the Creative Dad Podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. And I appreciate you having me on. Like, I appreciate that you think that my story is worth sharing, you know, to mm. your to your viewers. So thank yeah. you. Thank you oh, for having me on. Absolutely. I mean, this is a couple of years in the making, though, because you were supposed to be on my first podcast. You were supposed to be on, uh, I wanted to do a story on you, and I pitched it, and it got declined. And well, not by me. No, no, not oh, by right, you. So just, uh, no, by, by you know, resources. Uh, yeah, 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 no. Uh, it just didn't fit their shows or whatever reason. Um, and now finally we're here. Yes, but sir. You, there's, there's, a little, um, there's a little connection, though, to the creativity part because we were supposed to talk about photography and creativity and uh, you know, the process that we use and things like that. And we'll get into that. But uh, the other aspect is you're a father. Yeah, man. So um, name your kids. And, and there's a vast range of age, right? <laughs> well, not a vast range of, yeah, maybe the age, yeah, but not, In not age, the kids. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's Kali is the oldest. She is uh, 26. She mm-hmm. just turned 26 this year, a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Anthony is the middle child. Mm-hmm. He is 23. Uh, yeah, he'll be turning 24 in November, and Sophia is the baby. Uh, she is seven. She'll be eight in December. So big, yeah, 16 year age wow. difference between those two. You, you know, with with all the the kids um, and, and the change between ages, uh, is it hard? Like you're not the same person you were when you know. Oh no, man, you know, uh, when uh, when okay, so Anthony, when I, it's it's Gali were born, and then now um, you know uh, Sophia. Is, yeah. You yeah. Know, you're a different person. 16 years between Anthony and Sophia. Right. Um, when I was 20 years old, when Anthony was born, you know, so very young, uh, very uh, emotionally immature. Um, I mean, I, I, I'd hope in those 16 years that I've made a difference, that I've learned things and I, I do things a little different. Anthony has brought it to my attention. Oh, you're different with Sophia than you are with me. And I hope that I'm better. You know, I, I hope, I mean, because you, you're constantly learning things, I mean, just in life in general. Right. But as, as a parent, you learn to do things different. Um, I know that my parents, they don't really, um, I, I, don't, I don't do things the way they did things, right. you know, and they've, uh, they've got a different approach. I think both of them were more like the um, uh, tough love kind mm-hmm. of thing. I think my dad a little bit more. My dad was always like, a, like a, you know where I'm at if you need me. This is where I am. Mm-hmm. You know, if you need something, this, you know where to find me. Right. You know, my mom was more hands on. She was a single mom after they split up. And uh, but they were still like my mom was like, no, you have to watch your kids fail at mm-hmm. something, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I agree with that. Like, I see where she's coming from. Um, but it would break my heart to to why it's tough. You know, I, I can't I don't have the heart to to do that. And I know that when you help them a lot, you're not really helping them. I understand the whole idea of having your feet put to the fire to test, you know, um, I, I, my mom has done it with me and, yeah. you know. Now, were you like that with your uh, older kids or do you think that style or experience has changed since? Or did you apply that to all three kids? No, I think, um, well, so, you know, my son is 23. Um, it's got, you know, she comes to me with uh, advice, but she really doesn't need as much. And, and that's a cool thing too. Like each one is their, is their own person and we have our, our own relationships um, and just the way we, we interact and all that stuff. But with Anthony, you know, sometimes he, he needs some help and yeah. um, 
so we've got our own, you know, relationship. Uh, Sophia, she's still, you know, way young. Um, you know, it's a little different, but um, Sophia is not going to be spoiled. I, mean, I don't think she, she, you know, I don't think she's spoiled right now. We have a good time, but I, I think um, the situation is different with her than it was with them too. You know, when they were her age, you know, they had their parents in the same household. Sophia doesn't. Um, I, I always take that into consideration. And, you know, again, maybe my parents will be like, you know, you overthink, you, you do too much or whatever. Right. You have a big heart or whatever. Right. But I, I think um, it, the circumstances are, are different. Yeah. You know, so um, what what they needed, they had. And maybe what Sophia needs, it, it's a little different now. Um so I, I kind of I kind of approach them that whole thing uh, individually, right? But um, yeah, they, are, they are also their own person as well. Yeah, you know, and, they, and I appreciate just the, the relationship that I have with each of them, uh, the things we connect on, the right. things we talk about, the conversations we have. Right. Um, Sophia is super smart and funny. She keeps me laughing oh. all the time. Cool. Uh, I was just telling her yesterday, and it's got you know them together. I, I told Sophia like. You were, you're smarter. I mean, not a side and say you're smarter. I said, you're funnier than both your siblings, you know, ever. and it's kind of hard to agree. She's like, you know, she's very funny. Uh, Anthony was funny. Um, but Sophia, but see, Sophia now has them both to look up to, to, to teach her things. Uh, she learns from both. She, her, she and it's have a, an amazing relationship. She loves them. They love each other so much. And, um, she learns a lot from her. So she's lucky in that aspect. Um, when the older two were together, they had just themselves. Now Sophia has them both, right. you know, to learn from. To, uh, and then now Sophia has her her nephew, you oh, know, my, my yeah. grandson. Yep. So um, that's another <laughs> another character. Right. You know? It's beyond. It's the creative uh, grandfather pod now. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a grandfather. You are. But, <laughs> dude, yeah, you're just rolling. With yeah. It. Um, I, I love it. Um, yeah. Is that one different? Is that relationship different? The grandson? I mean, it's not directly your kid, but it is your grandson. Yeah. It, well, so it's it's different in a lot of ways. Um, it, it's true what they say, like, oh, you know, grandkids, you could you could have fun with them. You could always give them back, <laughs> you know, like, OK, that, that right. part's true, too. Right. I, I get that. But, you know, uh, a while ago, you know, I was on the treadmill and I was and I was just thinking about, you know, sometimes my son, he, he's he got uh, I'm not gonna say he's sometimes, you know, he's at the end of his uh, uh, he, his he gets wits, frustrated. Wits yeah, end, yeah. yeah. You know, and and uh, and King, that's my grandson's name. He um, cool name. Yeah. He, he'll, he'll just maybe just get on his, his nerves or, or whatever. I don't <laughs> want to put words in his mouth. But um, and, and Anthony will snap at him yeah. and I will jump in and I'll say, dude, you know, chill. It's cool. You know, and so anyway, I was on the treadmill, I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know what, me jumping in, you know, and I, I almost wanted to cry thinking about it, was like, like me jumping in when I used to lose my, my temper, you know, and so me shielding my grandson from my son is kind of like me shielding my son from me, you know, and now it's just like things aren't that serious. What is, do you think that's a second chance for you? Right? In a lot of ways, yeah, right. it's a second chance to do better. Right. Um, and not to judge and not to tell my son, like, you know what, you shouldn't be doing this, but there's an easier way to do this. That's you such know? a battle though, right? Like, cause you, you want to jump in. And that's what I tell him. Right. I, I say, I, I don't mean to, you know, uh, step over you. I don't mean to, you know, uh, undermine step. your authority right. and stuff right. like that. Uh, and so please don't, you know, I, I don't mean to do that, but we don't need to get upset about things, right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. uh, Pump the brakes. Just, yeah, you know, just, just chill, you know, yeah. uh, just think of me as, you know, this guy like from the future. And I, I'm just, you know, trying to tell you like, it doesn't have to be, you yeah. know, now in that situation, do you pull him to the side? I assume that you don't call him out in front of his son, but I mean, to give him advice, when do you pick? Yeah, yeah, we do it. Yeah. I mean, cause one of my favorite things to do is I, I like to take them to breakfast. I, I like to, um, you know, just spend time with them. Uh, if it's not breakfast, we'll go here, we'll go to lunch. I don't know. It's cool. like a love language or something, right. you know? Right. Um, and we'll talk about it then. We'll talk about um, on the way there, on the way back. Um, the tough thing is that Anthony and I, I don't know if it's because we're just too alike that we've always bumped heads, mm. you know, for the longest time. And um, you, you gotta have to, you gotta tread lightly right. sometimes, you know? Uh, because, and, and I have to remind them also that a lot of the advice that I give you, you know, I mean, all the advice that I give you, it, it's coming from love. Uh, I, I, I love you. I care about you. I don't want you making the same mistakes I made. I don't want you, you know, when you don't need to. Right. Uh, so you don't have to listen to and you don't have to mm -hmm. do whatever yeah. I, I say, but at least consider. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I've been in your shoes. 
you know. So it's it's clear that you're not trying to control the situation. This is just my no, experience. No, that's his son. That's his yeah. son. You know, and all that. But I feel bad. You know, maybe for the times that I've lost my temper. Yeah. You know, and I didn't need to. Right. And um, if there's a way that I mean, that I can't take things back. I can't. You know, but he doesn't have to do that same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like just just ain't, chill. You got to be that way. Right. <laughs> it doesn't have it to. Yeah. Be that way. But yeah. you are your own person, and sometimes you're frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. Um, you're a creative yourself. Um, are any of your other kids or grandkids showing signs of photography oh, or, yeah. you know, uh, music or art or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. My daughter. And is it well, your fault? Well, uh, yeah, well, I'd like to, I'd like to think so. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if they'd agree, but uh, yeah, it's Kylie. She's a singer. Uh, she was with the, she was one half of the duo, the Lakesiders. Uh, and now she's doing her own thing. She's writing her own music. She's working on on some tunes. Uh, that's one of the things that I love is that she sends me drafts after draft. What do you think about this? Should I take this out? Should I add this? I appreciate it. Uh, I love it. Um, when she sent me um, Parachute, a, a oh. song that they had out years ago, uh, maybe about five years. Uh, that's on a seven inch, correct? Yeah. 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 I have um, it in there. Matt, it's, it's in, it's in there it's somewhere. In your collection. It's in there. Dude. Oh, right on. Right behind the Fox and Hound seven inch. Well, 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 when I saw that Fox and Hound, that took me back to my childhood. Oh, yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, no. When she sent me that one, um, I don't know if it was like yeah, an email or something, like a little file. And I, I knew like this is going to be like a cruising classic. I, I loved it, you right. know. And so now when she, um, and so at that time, I didn't have like, a nice car to cruise in, you know, so, and now I do. And now I, I, I said, well, let me, you know, send me your stuff. I'll go cruise to it. I'll listen to it. It's a whole, you and know, it'll fit. It's, it's just yeah, a whole vibe, you know, right? It's a whole vibe, okay. you know. Um, How proud are you at that point? You're cruising. Oh, well, not only that, but like, like times when I've been like just walking to the supermarket and someone in the parking lot is driving by playing right. one of her songs. It's a very popular song, you know, you, right? Yes. And I, and the, I just get the chills and mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm like that dude in the meme where he's like, they don't know this or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, they don't know that's my daughter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I've heard it there. I've heard it right. just walking in downtown and you know, all that stuff. Um, so she does that. Uh, Anthony also makes music, okay. but he's more into rapping okay. and, and stuff like that. Uh, he's got a few songs. Uh, well, they were on, on different streaming services. Yeah, platforms. Yep. So um, he's trying to get back into that. He's working his day job. He's finding out what it's like to, you know, uh, when you have to do. Balance. Yeah, yeah which, when you have to do what you have to do yeah. so that you can do what you want to do. Right. You know, that whole thing. Right. Uh, he's, he's finding that out and he's trying to make some time for, for that creative outlet. And uh, I think Sophia is going to. Uh, I think she's going to do big things. And I'm not just saying that, but I think she's got uh, not just her, her siblings to look up to, but there are a lot of uh, inspiring, creative people, you know, around that, that she's um, that, that um, intrigue her that are she takes enlightenment by. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. That's- and, and that's one of the favorite things that well, one of the things that I really appreciate about like what I'm what I do and the people that I get to meet mm. is that I get to bring her with me. Right. Um, there was a time, uh, Frank Romero invited me to do a show and he says, okay, come to my studio, bring some of your work. And it was a Saturday. I had her with me and she's like, I don't know, three years old at the time, you know, two years old. And so she goes with me to a studio and she's sitting there and she's like drawing on one of his, you know, uh, pads, you Uh know? And I, I took a picture of it and I'm like, dude, like I grew up here in LA, Frank Romero, 101 freeway, going to the Olympics, you know, uh, legendary Chicano artist. And this little girl is sitting in his studio using his pencil to, to <laughs> yeah, draw, you yeah. know? And, uh, but, you know, so, I mean, I'll tell her the story later, mm-hmm. but different people that I get to meet now, artists and stuff like that, she gets to meet them. She gets, uh, hopefully, you know, become inspired by, you know, um, what they create. And, right. and she can create that too. Right. We went to the Cheech on yeah. the uh, opening day okay. and it was the same, mm. that, that same idea. Like you can be putting stuff on these walls, yeah. you know, you can create things too. Yeah. yeah. I want her to it, believe it's, that. It's that exposure to the opportunities, right? There's a lot of things that we don't understand growing up or we didn't, you know, for whatever circumstances you, you're in, there's a lot of things that I know now that I wish I would have known then because then things would be different. Yeah. Like I didn't, for me personally, I never really understood how big I was. And how tall I was, and how <laughs> much of a gift it kind of is, uh-huh. until you stand next to pro athletes and all these, and you're like, oh wait, I could have done this if I could have understood or experienced that, right? Yeah. I imagine that that happens with kids all the time, where it's like, oh, I could dance, 
you know, representation is so important, such a big deal. Um, and it's a, there's a reason we make a big deal out of it is you never know who's going to be exposed to what and what they could possibly do or be as they progress kids specifically as they grow and progress. Yeah. Um, so and, it's and, that, and that's one of the connections that I have with, uh, with, uh, it's is, you know, uh, the motivation mm. and sometimes uh you know like it ebbs and flows and oh yeah and we're, we kind of end up in the same boat sometimes where we got to motivate each other you know to mm-hmm. keep going and uh when you were asking me about um if uh the children if, if the kids would blame any of 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 their not not their talents maybe but their interests on me uh, yeah years ago we used to go to um, Luis Rodriguez's spot, the Achuchas. Oh, we used yeah. to go there a lot, uh-huh. and she and Iskali would go uh, for the open mics. And I, always, I always thought that was real brave, you know, uh-huh. to be up on stage, maybe uh, fourteen years old, you know, yeah. uh, singing. Um, when I used to work at the library, uh, she used to be there, open mics, bring you know, with her guitar, Nella Art Walk Night. If I had a show, she and her friends would be playing outside the the shop. And so sometimes I got to remind her too, like, you're not new to this. You've been, you've been doing this, you know, and that pumping her up, pumps me up back and forth. And I appreciate that part of our relationship, you know? Well, you as a parent exposing your kids to art and creativity and people, it's amazing and it's beautiful. But how much of that is you filling your own (laughs) voids or or your interests um, and you're just dragging your kids along? (laughs) Well, at first, at first it was. um, And that's, you know, something that I've learned from and I I regret. Um, At the very beginning, when I was, when I just got started, I was out the gate hitting show after show after show uh people would be like hey man your photos are great keep it up you know and then before you know it i would start to pick up shows and then well then you need photos you need more uh you know you need more photos for the shows and and all this this work for your portfolio and i was dragging the family to any show i would hear of Mm -hmm. you know this city that city you know um and then after that then you get kind of like burned out you know but Mm -hmm. now now it's fun because now it's like if I, if I want to do something, if I want to go somewhere and shoot something, it's because I want to, I want to capture something, right. you know, it's, it's, oh, a, so there's a more of a purpose, there's more of a purpose coverage. Right? Yeah. It, it's not anymore about, like, I need to be there. I need to shoot this. Uh, no, it's, it's more, but the, you know, it, it's, it's all finding the balance. Yeah. I know? mean, in the beginning it's acute enthusiasm, right? It's a, it's a, the honeymoon phase. Yeah. I want to run around. I want to shoot everything. I got to do everything. I got to do this. How much money are you making? What time are you sacrificing? With who and how much? But you're 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 bringing your family along to these things. They're exposed to the to the culture and to the people and the arts and the creativity. So I I mean I I wouldn't say be too hard on yourself on the idea of like regretting it, but um, I I think it's awesome that your kids kind of sort of kind of uh, learned from it um, and have gone on to do amazing things and are still continuing to do amazing things. Yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate that part of it. Um, there was a time where I was at Chicano Park, maybe mm. about four years ago, mm. and I'm out there shooting, and these uh, two Japanese women, they come up to me, and I'm like, oh, it looks like they recognize me. And uh, they're like, you know, excuse me, are you, and I was ready to say, yeah, you know, are you, it's Kylie Marie's dad. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, I was like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I called her up, I let her know. But um, now, oh. so now, you know, she's doing her thing. Um, Anthony, he's, he's into his music, but he's you know, into like a different kind of scene, right. you know, uh, hopefully we'll see what, what Sophia, right. you know, gets into. Um, she might just, I mean, but she, she does feel like she can do anything, you know, oh. if she wants to sing, she can sing. If she wants to be an actress, she mentions she wants to be an actress. You can do it. You know? So for, um, a lot of creatives that are starting to grow their Instagram numbers, their TikTok numbers, their, their following, you have one of the coolest social media handles ever i think i think it's awesome um the idea that you got in there and got it quick and stuff is phenomenal but with that comes and your work comes recognition popularity how do you bring that up to your kids you know with with them (laughs) under do they understand it and and how do you go about under like helping them understand what is going on well it's interesting uh well the whole thing started off with just me being a fan of chicano soul music and this and i and i secured the name uh i guess Back when I was on Twitter, I used to use Twitter a lot, maybe uh, 2009, 
you know, somewhere it's, it's around there. It's X now. Oh, X it's, now. That's yeah. true. That's true. You can't even find it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's yeah, X. It's lost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's X. You're right. So, but who's, yeah, who's those dumb days, idea was that? Yeah. Oh. It, it, yeah. I was looking in the app store. I was like, what? Uh, no, but, and so I was using Chicano Soul. I love the music. I, I love the history. I, that's what I really named it after or, or you know, the, the whole reason. Um, and then when I'd go to car shows and stuff like that. And so then the photography became like where I didn't want to be known as just the lowrider guy. I didn't want to just photo, photograph myself into a corner and just be that guy. I started to, I, I wanted to, to capture the essence of the event that I was at. Right. You know, if, if you didn't happen to make it out to that event, you were going to regret it or you would at least enjoy it through my photos. That was my goal, you know, and that's, that's still my goal now. Um, but it, it's funny because Sophia is all about the numbers. You know, she wanted to start a TikTok because she wanted to be, you know, famous. And just uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think it was, she's like, Dad, how are you? And she knows that I, I photograph her all the time. Wait, she's seven and wants to be famous <laughs> Yeah, so it's not, you know, oh. it's not really like a good thing. You know, they say, they see, they see different like influencers yeah. and they think I'm just going to be famous. Yeah. Uh, so it's not really the best thing. But um, she knows that I, I photograph her all the time. You know, and now she's starting to get a little picky. So I've gotten to that point where she <laughs> wants to see she wants to see what I post or what I you know, uh, that, and that just happened recently. So I'm like, I think we're we're there now. Right. Um, but she did ask me the other day, Dad, how are you so famous if all you do is post pictures of me? You know, and I thought that was the best. Uh, she has no clue. Like I mean, but I'm not famous. But like she has no clue. Like I guess really what I do. Right. Um, so she, she's around when people come up to you and like, oh, you're Art Mesa, you're Chicano Soul. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of the time when they come up to me or, you know, when people do, I, I introduce myself by my name. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm always going to be dad. Right. You know, to her. Um, I'm always going to be grandpa, you know, to mm-hmm. King. I'm, I'm always going to be seen different, you know, uh, to all yeah. of them. So that's the best. But see, that's the best thing, too. Like. If I, if I can take great photos of maybe a car or of an event, like I want to take the best photos of my kids right. that I can take. You know, uh, my grandson's mom tells me that I take the best photos of him, you know, and that's, oh. that's a goal, you know, oh, okay. because a lot of times when you look at family photos, nobody cares who took them. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it, it's great to see nice photos, but nobody asks who took this photo, right. you know, right. uh, maybe a lot of times they're not really like thought put into it right. or like you don't. But I think that's like a love language also right like just wanting to capture moments wanting to freeze time uh, and that's another that's another conversation right. you know photography as that right. just freezing time right you know well before we get into that you you talk about your kid wanting to be famous uh-huh. seven years old yeah right? i mean I'm, I'm just looking it up right now ryan kaji youtuber you know ryan's world how old is he he's nine uh-huh. he makes close to 11 million dollars <laughs> a month yeah um, wow. A month, huh? Yeah. So the idea that your, your kid thinks that they can be famous exposure, right? But also, do you think that's a little dangerous? I think it's dangerous. That, well, so that's my first thought. You know, um, I think it's dangerous, especially being so young. Could you imagine doing that? It, like you're it's seven, it was, you're seven years old, nine years old. What were you doing? Where did you want to be? Did you want to make a no, but $11 million? At, no, not even. But at the same time. Oh, so yeah, th- times are totally different, but I think she is, is, way smarter than I was because just even just the other day she you know driving to jiu-jitsu and she asked me to put on a specific song that she likes and she says I don't know this this song makes me cry but I like it you know oh. and I was thinking at seven years old there were no songs making me cry you know I, I didn't listen right. to lyrics that deep right uh, so I like that about her I like her you know the, the sensitivity um, I, I think she's very smart but it is dangerous because you're you know you could be very smart but now nah, people are people are weird out there right you know you gotta you, right well, I think I think the hard part is like coming to grips with like w- w- the capabilities of, of kids. I don't I, I, I in my opinion, I don't think we give them enough credit um, more specifically in sports. For me, I, I pay attention to a lot of basketball. Uh, a lot of these kids and their abilities are phenomenal when they're 12, 13, 14. How are you dunking when you're 12? Oh, you just have this ability to do it and you run with it, right? Mm-hmm some of these kids kind of sort of peak when they're in high school, right? Or they, they start getting up to that level. And at that point you have agents, you have um, merchandise, you have, now you have social media, you have people trying to help you make money or help themselves make money. Um, But also that sounds so amazing, right? All I got to do is play basketball and, 
and continue to, to, to rise. And, you know, it grows an ego. It grows, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's, the world is different, right? Your exposure to that is different. Um, uh, but I, I think at some point you probably should let them run with it. Right. Because they're their own person. It's the idea of letting them grow. Right. Did you see that TV show ballers? Yeah. Uh, yeah. that's what they were talking about. Okay. You know, at the right. very end. Right. Um, right. Yeah, because they're capitalizing on, you know, they're making money, right. but not allow, allowing the kids to make money. And it, it is their bodies put on the line, right. you know, game after game. And once they get injured, then what? Right. You know, um, I, it, the, what's, what's interesting about that is, is like, I think you, you can help by teaching them character, right? And what's more important, you know, money or what you're doing with your fame or your mm-hmm. abilities, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, I, I started watching the Deion Sanders stuff. You know, Deion Sanders being a f- phenomenal football player, phenomenal coach now, um, t- coaching it for the Colorado Buffs, right? Um, and they talked about how historically ba- black schools, um, colleges and universities uh, are you kind of sort of bringing in kids, right? Like how they're recruiting. The recruiting number, money-wise, is very different for HBCU schools as opposed to, you know, the top five in the country. Mm-hmm. Alabama's budget for, you know, all that stuff is 173 million versus Jackson State, which has like nine mil, right? But they recruited one of the best recruits in this country, right? The, the, they, they kind of, in the article that I read in the US, USA Today had talked about how HBCU colleges had produced five Pro Bowl I mean, pro Hall of Famers. Alabama had produced none. Lots of no, national yeah, championships, right? Yeah. Very good machine for a team, right? Yeah, but, but individual. Right, individually. What are you, who, who are you recruiting and, and what are they becoming? One of the people they talked about was Herschel Walker, former football player. Yeah. Phenomenal. Pro, Bowl, a pro Hall of Famer. Pro Bowler, obviously. Um, but they talked to him about you know, why, why, why did you choose this, this school over that school? And he said that his mom taught him a lesson that said, when somebody pays for your abilities and you're producing for them, that can all go away when you stop producing because you're a product. Mm -hmm. You want to give what you love as opposed to getting paid for what you love, right? Because once you're done, they don't care about you. They just buy another one, right? Yeah. So that's why he felt like he wanted to pick another school over the bigger schools. But that was just character, right? Like yeah. that's just teaching kids, you know. That's a good lesson, to, right? To learn and to to give your kid, right? It's value, age. right? Yeah, right. But I, it's like now it feels like you have to teach them younger. <laughs> yeah, because that, they're that, they're recruiting them younger. That money can come at you when you're eleven. Yeah, you know, nine. Yeah, you know, or, or oh, I'm sorry, nine yeah. years old, eleven million a I month. Get, I better get her on track. Right, right. She's almost there. It's yeah, almost time. it's almost time. Um, but I mean, speaking of success, you, my friend, you and I, we go pretty far back um, in in social media life. Um, we we uh, a little history on us is we connected on social media because I used to live in Echo Park. I used to live on Everett Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, I posted a picture. Somehow you saw it and you sent me a, a message. You're like, oh, you know, my mom used to live right there. Yeah, I'm getting the chills now because that, that street is home. Dude, Teardrop Park. Yeah. As you, na- you, you referenced it and from that on, day on, I was like, that's Teardrop Park. Yeah. Um, and you sent me a picture. You sent me a, a photo of your mom when she was younger, two houses down from where I lived at the point, and in the background was Everett park mm-hmm. uh i recognized it but uh, smaller trees yeah yeah um yeah. not a lot of cars yeah um older cars as Different, well yeah yeah it, but it, it was the street it was beautiful yeah um but like we we got in that conversation of like you know history and you know why you got into photography and your successes uh, i just want to go into for the people that don't understand your uh your um your creative background so this street in particular, uh, my mom and her parents were all born in El Paso. Uh, they came to L.A. in 56. My mom was two years old. They moved to Everett Street. They lived in a few different houses on Everett, but I think one of the first ones was at the very top of the hill, and then they kind of worked their way down, and then they ended up at 974, which is at the bottom of the park. Uh, it's no longer there. They, I, I went by recently. They knocked it down. Right. But it was at the very bottom of the park. Right. So when I saw the picture you posted, 
like that park has always been home to me. Um, after, you know, when my parents split up, uh, we moved in with my grandparents. We lived across the street from the park. We were at the park, me and my sisters, we were at the park every day, rolling down the park, going mm -hmm. home all, you know, itchy and all that yeah, stuff, right. you know? But like you said, the trees were, the trees were a lot lower. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to sit at the park, look at the skyline, you know, beautiful skyline, Christmas time. I think it was either the U.S. Bank building. One mm -hmm. of them had like a nice little Christmas tree up there, right. you know, right. with lights. Um, but that park has always felt like home. Even now, if I'm in the neighborhood, I swing by, right. have lunch, you know. Oh, um, you can find parking? I didn't know that. No, yeah, well, you can find parking. Um, but, you know, yeah, Eastside Deli, you <laughs> oh, know, yeah. that's another For sure. staple. For sure. Uh, pick up a sandwich, go to the park, right. just hang out, enjoy the view, you know. Um, but, no, yeah, I saw the picture you posted, and I had to share, you know, a, a little bit of that history. Thanks, man. Uh, because I, I feel like... Um, a, a big reason why I do, you know, why I, I do enjoy the photography is, is for that we were here idea, you know, um, our stories, uh, you know, you might never, you might not uh, learn somebody's story, but it, their story exists, you know, so when you do get the chance to, to learn it, uh, I think it's a special thing. So it's like just taking photos, just proof like we existed, we were here at one time, um, I don't know if I showed you the one where like my my grandmother, my great grandmother, they're just at the park. They're like standing there. There was like a they would tell me there was a photographer that would go by like every every so often and he would offer to take your pictures. That's awesome. You know, yeah. I, um, I think his name was like Lazaro or something. Um, but yeah, he'd go by sometimes with like a little horse and the kids. Would oh, sit on yeah. The horse, okay, you know, yeah. That kind of sure. thing. And um, and yeah, so just like, you know, at, at one moment in, in time, you know, uh, like my family like existed, they lived there, they enjoyed the park, but then it's just like ghosts, you know, uh, so many families, right? right? I mean, so many families have, right. have their stories that are connected. And as a matter of fact, one time, one of the first times I was, I was vending, uh, this, uh, uh, older gentleman, Asian guy comes up to me and he says, you're the guy with the old photos, you know? And I said, well, my photos maybe look kind of old, but mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know? So he says, he says, wait, wait here. I got something for you runs to his car and he comes back with a shoebox of photos, you know? So he started showing them to me. And one that I recognized immediately was taken at the top of the hill. You okay. Know? So I get the chills and he's like, this was my, um, this was my 1964 Impala, you know? So an older Asian dude went by the name Chino Willie. Right. And, and <laughs> that, that was, awesome. and that was, yeah, that was his name. Like they call me Chino Willie. This, is like a this movie. dude, I'll, I'll show you the picture. Uh, uh, and rest in peace to, to Chino Willie. I know he, mm -hmm. he passed a few years later, but uh, when he was dressed, it was over in uh, Cypress Park at okay. Antigua uh, okay. at the coffee shop. Uh, they're, they're, we were doing a pop up out there, and uh, he he showed up in a Pendleton creased, uh, Levi's creased, oh. uh, his hair slicked back. Oh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, Chinese American guy. Okay. you know, Chino Willie, and All he right. drove a, a Chevy Fleet Line, Dang. like nice, like you know. So he was showing me these old photos. He said that he lived um, on the on the top of that hill, you know, and I. You know, I went to my dad right away and I said, uh, my dad grew up a few blocks over, but he was always there, you yeah. know, at my grandparents' house, right. my mom and I, and, uh, you know, connected the dots. Oh, yeah, I knew his brother at one point. His brother, his brother was a uh, police officer, LAPD, oh. uh, died in the line of duty, Oof. maybe like his rookie year. Mm. So in Chinatown, I don't know if you've seen like throughout the city, they have these uh, markers. Mm -hmm. When you die in the line of duty, they, they put a marker up oh, in right, the location. Right. So I think it's like college and um, Broadway. Okay. Uh, they have the marker. So anyway, yeah, this, this guy, Chino Willie, his brother had passed away dur yeah, during a call. Um, Damn. But yeah, no, I, I checked the story with my dad. Oh, yeah, I knew this. And I knew his brother. His name was Arthur oh. Suhu. Suhu. Um, is it Peter Suhu, the photographer for John? the Dodgers? Oh, John. John Suhu. Uh -huh. Yeah, related. Whoa. Yeah. Dude, John Suhu. World, yeah. So their whole family was uh one and the whole family i think chino willie's right. um maybe uncle great mm -hmm. uncle something like that was instrumental in getting the new chinatown started wow you know and then uh yeah john su who's uh, his cousin or something wow yeah so I'm i mean so john all about these, that all yeah. these uh, all these uh la stories right they're all <sighs> intertwined and, and right. they're all out there right but you don't always get to come across them but they come together in a photo it's one it's one instant <laughs> It's not a video. Yeah. It's not a tweet. It, it's, yeah, and it's so so what happened was I ended up printing that. Um, I got the chills right now. I ended up printing that photo. I used it for a show that I did in San Francisco. Um, it didn't sell. Brought it back with me. Left it framed. Um, I used the hashtag Chino Willie on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, his daughter ended up seeing the photo. 
And uh, she asked me about it, and I said, you know what? I, I have it framed. You want it. It's yours. Let's meet up. Met up. Gave her the framed photo of her dad. You know? Wow. He, he, he passed away. And Dude. I, I didn't know him very well, but I was, he was a very nice guy. He was cool with me. I Let mean, me he got you at that moment. At that moment, he got you. Yeah. Wow. And, 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 and just that connection with the, you know, he didn't know that I ever lived on Everett, but yeah. as a kid, you know, yeah, in the 80s. Yeah. That was, that was my... My grandparents lived there, so Dude, that's. I mean, I'm a 970s guy. I'm right next to that house that used to oh, be uh-huh. there. Yeah, yeah, 974. Um, yeah, that, I mean, the hills changed, but I get that's that's just where we are right now, right? Those yeah. things are changing. Yeah. Um, uh, what was the training day filmed up there? Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was a kid, they they filmed a Nestle's Toll House commercial okay. like on my grandma's porch. Okay. And then uh, Lou Diamond Phillips, they filmed like this Christmas movie. <laughs> what? Yeah. And he, it was up there? Yeah, it was That's up there. Tight. It was supposed to be like, they were like three wise men. He was one of the wise men. And I don't know how Lou. they ended up in LA and they were at the- Lou here. Diamond Phillips, the honorary Mexican? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, the, the stuff I remember being shot up there is like um, a Jack in the Box commercial. Uh, I just saw recent, I, I like seeing people now or organizations shoot up there now i'm like oh i used to live there mm-hmm. like just to me it just mm-hmm. brings something back mm-hmm. uh delos uh la times oh, uh-huh. just had a photo shoot up there i, I could tell because of where they shot him like, yeah yeah i've been there a million times um but yeah i mean that's the power of uh of photography mm-hmm. right it's freezing time yes mm-hmm. well the idea of freezing time but also holding people accountable right like you're saying Photography shows we were here. Mm-hmm. Why is it changing? Why is it different? It kind of sort of shows whoever's here or whatever's happening now wiped us out. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the um, people are different. People know? are different. The situations are different. Yeah, it's a good Architecture's thought. different. Um, but uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I think we had that conversation when we first, when you first shared that photo and that just kind of hit. Um, but like you said, it, you know, it's, it's like time travel as well. You've said that before and yeah. I can't agree with you uh, even beyond 100%. You know, I do agree with you beyond. Yeah, I was I supposed to look up uh, after we talked about that. I was supposed to look up a, a quote that I read mm. about photography being like a, a one way time traveling kind of thing. Oh. Uh, when I find it, I'll send it to okay. you. But uh, but yeah, that, that's what it is. It's just, you know, freezing time like this moment is never going to happen again. Right. You know, um, one of my favorite photos that I've taken was on the old Sixth Street Bridge. Dude, legendary. Thank you. Love and it's, it. it's like you're never going to get that again. The bridge is gone. Right. You know. Um, people are, are older, you know, but that photo is, is never going to change, you know? Yeah. Well, you look at the bridge now and it's cool looking, but it's not, it's not what it was. Not what it was. Yeah. Not what it was. So um, that, that's what I, that's what I like is just freezing time. Mm-hmm. Um, I also like, you know, I also like to make things look as old as I can. Maybe just remove some of the, the, the clues, okay. you know, maybe street signs okay. and stuff like that to make them look like as timeless as I can. Are you cool with Photoshop? Are you cool with AI? Are you cool with uh, I mean, Photoshop? I don't really know too much okay. uh, with Photoshop. My, the extent is like just cloning. Okay. Like if I want to erase something, oh, right. I could do that. Um, I think Photoshop is cool if that's what you want to do, if right. that's how you create. Right. You know, I think AI is is a whole new beast. Uh, have you I, touched I think it? Have you experienced no, it? No, no. Okay. But I, I think it's interesting. I think, uh, man, I, I think the possibilities are endless. Um, I just heard the other day. Um, I don't know if it was supposed to be like a, oh, it was like a diss track. Um, but somebody had said that it was AI. Other people said that no, it wasn't. <laughs> but you never know now. I know. You know. I know. It's because they can have like Willie Nelson singing to like Notorious B.I.G. Right. You know. Right. Or vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. I mean, it, maybe it won't sound 100 percent, but right. I'm sure a lot of it's going to fool a lot of people. Yep. And you could do that with photos. I think photos is probably the easiest thing to do. Right. Um, yeah. The things that I've seen with photos is like I think they showed the uh, the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then you just like expand on it. But if you want to call that art, you call that art. Right. Um, I mean, you're prompting, right? It's your idea and you prompt it. Yeah, you're it's creating. Easier. Right. You know. That's a tough one. It's it tough. really is. Um, I did learn. I, I I did use AI on on some of my older photos um, to kind of crop stuff out. Like I just I didn't want to go through the cloning process. It makes me go faster. It does the job that I was going to do anyways, and okay. probably better than I would have done it. Okay. I just wanted to crop out a little exit sign. Cool. I just I learned that your metadata shows and mentions that this was done with AI. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, you can strip metadata pretty easy, but um, j- I didn't I didn't realize that they're marked. I like the idea that they're marked. You know, um, if you got explainer, show them. I, I could do, I have the receipts. This is the original photo. This is what I did. Not mm-hmm. a big deal. Now, when you start changing things to make them better, uh, 
that's a little tough for me, you know? Um, yeah, it's kind of like a slippery slope, but it's kind of like yeah. um, two different, because one, yeah, you, you're still creating. You can say, well, this is my vision to make it look like this. Right. But then at the same time, you know, it, it's not what you shot. Right. But you could always fall back on that. Well, this well, is what I meant to create. Well, the other side is there's artists that have people that work for them. They're not the painters. They have the idea. Right? Yeah. I just, I want the people to, I had this guy, um, you know, I had this idea for a light. And I don't have the skill set. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so they got the fabricators. Yeah, and or a um, piece of metal. That's what, interesting too. Right. Yeah, because so, maybe you should be crediting the the actual artist, right? Or the, you know. Yeah, and, and but, that's a slippery slope. But yeah, who's who's the artist? But did the but did the person that crafted it come up with that idea? Uh, yeah, they didn't. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a toughie, right? In in the art world, I think that's tough, and that's one of the things that people need to I feel like need to be discussed a little more. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough. It's hard for yeah, me. Also disclosed. Mm-hmm. You know, when you buy an art piece, oh, right. maybe put all that information out there. I, I maybe right. make a difference to some people. Right. I uh, mean, I, I, maybe I want to know that, you know, yes, you had the idea, but you didn't necessarily create it with your own hands. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, how much did you, how much input did you right. have or, you know, yeah, what did you do? Like, did you just remove <laughs> no, this one good. little thing yeah. or did you add stuff that wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, just, you know. Okay, well, it's, it's, done like, it's like those infinity zooms that you have going on now, right? Like one old photo, photo and then it zooms out and there's oh, automatically yeah, yeah. content around it. Um, I, I think it's creative and fun. Would I buy it? No. No, I, I think uh, AI is interesting. I'd love to watch more stuff on right. it, but um, I, I don't know. It's, it's a whole new thing. Right. Uh, and it's just going to keep you know growing. Right. And, and I heard about like maybe um, graphic designers losing out on jobs because AI can just do. Well, writers as well. You can prompt stories now, yeah. you know. Um, I, I mean, I use, I, I, do, I will admit that I do use AI to start certain things. It's like a draft, right? So it kind of sort of turns from copywriter into an editor, right? Like I don't need to, I have this idea. I just need this out. I'm going to write it anyways. I'm going to edit this to where it's more of a me Sounds like me, talks like me, all this other stuff, and then we're good. Yeah, because then on the other side too, on the one of the pros would be like a guy that you know can do so much more, right? You know, on his right. own, right? And doesn't have to spend on this person, like to start up right. his business. Or something. Well, see, your your art is very clever. Um, your captions are very clever. Um, I think uh, I was going. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? Uh, I was going through low writing. Um, the book that you helped uh, publish, you know, your photos in there, a lot of poems, 10 years old. If you haven't read it, please pick it up. Anybody that needs to read this and see it, please do. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, um, still, I'm proud of that book. You yeah, should it's be. Been, it's, it's been out almost 10 years. It's now, a publication, yeah. man. It's a beautiful publication. Um, but I, I was reading the captions of, of your photos. Uh, so the captions then would be credited to Santino Rivera. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm more than okay, sure that the captions or the titles of your photos. The titles would be mine. Okay, okay. that's clever. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yes, uh, the idea. Maybe some dad jokes in there. Right. Right. <laughs> well, more specifically, there's one that I really enjoy, and I wonder if you print this or if you still have this available because I might want to have this done. Um, one of your low riders is up and one is down. Uh-huh. I think highs, and, highs lows. and lows. Yeah, yeah. I'll and look for I, that. Dude, I love that photo so much. That's one. Of, so, the, so the whole thing with with the book, right? Um, I, I think so. Santino did a book called Ban This. If, mm-hmm. if you remember the book banning in Tucson, right, in, in Arizona, oh, twenty twelve or and so. And now Mexican American. Yeah, and now, yeah, bullshit. right. Yeah. So, yeah. in in twenty twelve, he said he got this idea where he's going to open a call for submissions. People are going to submit poetry, short stories, all this stuff, and he put out this amazing book. You know, Ban This. You know, and so then a year later or so, he says uh, he came to me and he said, um, and he actually. Uh, included two of my poems that I had on a blog years ago into Ben This, you know. And I felt like, man, I was honored to be in that book with so many talented writers, you know. But when he came to me w- about with the idea for low writing, I said, okay, well, I feel a little bit more, you know, at home with this, right. but still, man, I, the pressure, you know. Right. But I was like, who's offering? Nobody's, uh, nobody's offering me a book. You right. Know? So right. Uh, he says, uh, yeah, maybe gather like 50 photos and we're going to pair it again with That's submissions awesome. on uh, low writing culture, uh, poetry, short stories, essays. There's a screenplay in there. There's an interview in there. Um, and then there's also some other art pieces from mm-hmm. other artists submitted, you know. So that the book came out 2014 and it's still an amazing book. And, and uh, I'm still so proud to be a part of it. You know, uh, there's some well-known voices in there, and then there's some uh, people that you might not have ever heard of, but equally as strong. 
right? Yeah, no. I mean, but also, it's a test of time, right? Ten years ago, this is what we felt. This is how it was going. The battle's still going. Yeah, right. Yeah, which is crazy, but it, it's unfortunately it's all right here in California. But yeah. I mean, if you're not aware, some books could be disappearing that have knowledge that could be very dire to you know. I don't know accuracy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, a friend of mine, she just posted something on that today. Oh, okay. Uh, Irene Sanchez, she posted, uh, uh, you know, a book banning, still book banning, and um, I forget exactly what it was, but it was something like, uh, in in the first slide, it was like um, all the books that are being banned. In the second slide, it was like the teacher saying, "Okay, well, these are the books we're going to read," you know, uh, specifically. Yeah. So I think that's so cool. But yeah, I mean, it's still going on, and. Um, was it uh, Zach De La Rocha that said, like, they don't have to burn the books. They just got to remove them. Yeah, you exactly. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, but uh, that's, that's crazy. But yeah. that's been a historical thing, right? Yeah. Like you, you take away the knowledge, you take probably the, mm-hmm. the empowerment mm-hmm. or the idea that this happened in the past. This could change things, yeah. right? It's, it's so just it, so it, I, I think I read somewhere recently, too, where it's, it, they were saying, like, it is up to us, you know, to educate ourselves and educate our kids. At the, I mean, you can't rely on you know, public schools, you can't rely on anybody to do it for you. Right. You know, that's got to come from you. Yeah. You know, it, 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 sure. The book is 10 years old, mm-hmm. but you speak of it. I think as, as enthusiastic as you did when I first met you, I think I met you at Espacio. You had a show yeah, at Espacio. Yeah. Maybe 2016. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Um, and you spoke about it that well, then I had to buy it. I had it. I get it. <laughs> Um, but I, I do have a quote. It's on my website um, and I have it under my director of photography um, page and it's uh, it's a Regina King. It's a quote. If you have the opportunity for your art to meet activism, you shouldn't pass that up when it comes your way. Yeah. It kind of just fell in your lap. Yeah. But you hit it. You hit a home run. That, that book is beautiful and I would advise please check it out if you get a chance. Thank you. Um, Amazon, your... Uh, yeah, Amazon carries it uh, mm-hmm. but if you want a signed copy you can go through me. Um, I've got, I always try to keep some on you hand. sound like you want to fight. <laughs> what? <laughs> come through if, me. If, if you come, want it. You, you come, and get it. Come, come, come and get it. 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 And I'll sign it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, and yeah, uh, if you want to sign one you know where right. to come. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that doesn't become like a quote or something. I, well, dude, that's the that's the promo oh, now. My oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but your art's amazing. I'm 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 a fan. I've been a fan. Thank you, um, sir. Your titles are clever. AI couldn't come up with that. Oh yeah, the, the you know titles I mean? are all me. Right, that's yeah, what I mean, dude. Just, like, uh, AI couldn't come up. Well, with Well, I mean, that. some of them kind of like write themselves. Um, well, but, you would think it, it's it's in the eye of the beholder. You created it. You're there. That's yeah. your angle. If but you but that, some of them should be like deeper. Right. Like um, like the one that I was talking about, I named it American as Apple Pie. Right. Um, because one of the ideas behind the book was, you know, like hot rod culture. It, it's welcomed. It's revered. Oh, man, it's it's good old Americana, you know, one of our favorite pastimes kind of right. thing. But low writing could be the exact same thing, but different. But it's treated way different, right. you know. It, it's looked down upon, right. you know. There's so, laws against it. Yeah, like you know, there are no laws against yeah, cruising uh, hot rods, right? You know? Yeah. It so make sense. and and you know, so it always got like a bad rap. So the book was also to fight back on that, you know. So like with the American is apple pie, like you know, my photo is just you know dudes appreciating car culture, appreciating uh, camaraderie, just hanging out. The same thing you'd see at at another type of you know car mm-hmm. meetup. But and the um, only difference is the kind of person the, that's the, the skin it color and yeah, the way the, they're dressed. The, the way the car looks. And, yeah. Yeah. So at the beginning of the, when the book just came out, we spent a lot of time, you know, fighting back uh, on that idea, right. um, which I mean, you could still do today, but um, uh, when the book came out, there was no uh, budget for marketing. It was all grassroots, independently published. Um, right. So it was just word of mouth and just hustling, right. you know, which was, which was cool, but you know, maybe it could have got a little further if it did have money behind it. But, right. um, but no, I'm I'm still proud to even be asked to contribute to something like that. I, you know, it, it's amazing. So, yeah. ten years later, I'll still push the book. Fifteen years later, like I said, I'll, I I try to have copies on hand. Right, and and we we've had this conversation before, and I'll catch everybody up on it. Um, how you shoot? I'm I'm a gearhead. I I do like talking about details. I'm 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 a nerd when it comes to gear, um, and how people shoot and in in settings and stuff like that. You're very simple, though. Yeah, I'm very simple. So when I got into it, like like we said, 
I started with an iPod Nano, right? right? Because it was just a hobby. That's it awesome. Was just, That's beautiful. It was just like, uh, go to Bob's Big Boy on a Friday night at Burbank, you know, just take some shots. And people would say like, hey, man, keep it up. Hey, the, the photos are looking good, That's you know? awesome. And so um, when Santino hit me up about the book, I said, shit, I got to get a, uh, a better camera. I'm going to need larger files, I'm, you know, because he's going to want to print them. I don't know what size they need to be. So wait, so, so you get approached about the book from taking pictures from with your iPod Nano. Yeah. Yeah. Because on Instagram, you take the photos, you upload them. And at that time they were super small. Didn't square. Yeah. yeah you know, all the time. Uh, they weren't very detailed. Right. I mean, an iPod Nano was like shooting with a potato. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe a, not a Nikon. Good. You mean a Nikon? I'm just well, well, yeah. So I'm making fun of my yeah. Nikon friends. But yeah. <laughs> you mean a Nikon? One of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. So I went from the iPod, I went from the Nano. And then my family, you know, they got me like a, I think it was a cool picks. It was a Nikon cool picks. Okay. Yeah. And so then that was a like good a point and shoot camera, point right. and shoot. Um, Came and then, in different colors. It was like blue. <laughs> well, this one was a black one. It okay. 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 Kind of legit. It wasn't the pink one. No, okay, no, no. Okay. It was a black one. Just, I wanted to look professional, right. but yeah. um, no. So then, but Nikon was like an easy and uh, affordable way to get into photography, For sure. you know, um, lenses and stuff like that. Um, even now, like uh, now I, sh I still shoot with Nikon. Uh, just because I'm used to it, I would love to try something else. Um, but then the thought of having to start over with with a new body, with a new lens and, and different lenses and stuff like that. Right. I, I might be into that, but I already have what I have. That creates friction, though, right? <laughs> I mean, that, the the conversation we had was why your settings were in auto and oh, all that Oh, well, that was stuff, another right? thing, yeah. Like, uh, around, the, you know, so then I started to see, like, just photographers bashing other photographers. Right. And, and the thing was always... You're not a real photographer if you shoot on auto. And I'd read that and I'd be like, I shoot on auto. Yeah. You know, and I'm doing okay. And, and, and I'm maybe about I'm, to get published. And maybe, maybe I'm not a deal. yeah, maybe I'm not a real photographer in, in your eyes, but I'm doing okay. Like, you know, and I d I don't worry about what other people are doing. Um and I don't I don't know why you would want to. Um but yeah, I would I would shoot with the Nikon and um it was just very um you know, uh, it was a less expensive way to to get into it. You know, so uh, I still shit. I have a couple that I use, um, not the best lenses, but I but I do say like yeah, if you put, I mean, because I, I think like even with the iPod Nano, right? The photo is is your eye. That's what you capture. Um, yes, better equipment is going to make everything look sharper. It's gonna you're gonna have more uh, flexibility, possibility. You know, you have more options w what you want to do, but the, the majority the the photo is going to be like what you saw. And and the first show that I did. I remember a guy uh, complimenting the composition of the shot, and I didn't even know what he meant. And I just nodded along, but I was like, you know, I had to learn these things as I went. I've learned a lot um, in the 10 years. Uh, printing, I think we talked about that. Yeah, whole different monster. Yeah, I, um, there was a time where I, I threw out the idea to send one of my photos to City Hall, right? And, the, and I, I tweeted the mayor, you yeah. know, I was on Twitter, I tweeted the mayor, and he replied, send me your best shot. And I, I was like, oh, I was excited, I didn't know what to do. I was about to go print at like Office Depot, you know, and my framer, Mike at Frame Monster, uh, he said, uh, dude, you can't do that. You got to get like a legit G Clay archival print, Dang. you know, yeah. he put me in touch with somebody. That was the first time that I printed one 16 by 20. They were more expensive, but they were going to be, it was going to be legit. Were you scared to spend that much I money was, on a print? Yeah, I was because at that time um, I ended up printing two other prints uh, for a couple other people. And that was like 90 bucks. And I'm like, man, this is expensive, you know? So the one with the mayor, Mike supplied the frame. I supplied the print. We sent it to City Hall. Um, a couple weeks, maybe about a month later, I hadn't heard anything about it. But like a month later, the mayor is sitting with it on his lap. And he takes a picture. And he posts a picture. Uh, thanks to LA Zone, Chicano Soul for right. this. Look for it in the hallway, you know? And I was, you know, cloud nine. I, I was like, what, is, what does that mean? Which hallway, you know? Right. Uh, eventually we got it added to the city's fine art collection, you know, but it probably wouldn't have been if it was that office depot print. Right. But I've been lucky and, and fortunate to connect with good people. And then that's another thing is like to have like a good team. Uh, Mike with the frames, like my stuff gets complimented on the presentation sometimes before the photo itself. Like, hey, these are nice frames. It's, you know, it's legit. Uh, I've met up, I've, I work with the great printer, uh, Frank at Fathom. Um, always makes my stuff look good. So I, I feel confident when I go to Frank, blows out, you know, my prints like real good, go to Mike, frames them, they look legit, you know? And that's when I feel most like a like an artist, like I can create something. And that's what's, 
I think that's what's beautiful about the idea that you use auto, but you also use other friends and tools to kind of get to the final product. Yeah, well, uh, uh, in the time since I, I've tried like with manual, I've tried little, you know, yeah. different things. But uh, yeah, the majority of the time it's it's just set and I just shoot. How much of your work do you think wouldn't come out if you didn't shoot an auto, if you didn't have someone help you print, if you didn't get someone to frame it, if you try to do everything by yourself? So the auto thing, I think um, the auto thing is quick, right? You leave it on auto, you're gonna you're gonna, probably gonna get the shot that you want. But a lot of times, if you if you're gonna be manually adjusting things, it's gonna be more precise. That you're not gonna catch the same shots, right? But I think if if you know what you're doing, you know how to how to come up, go about it, you know. Uh, so I think that's one thing. I, I'm very uh, thankful that I've got a good team, you know, with Frank and with Mike. Um, because when I do like, uh, like I'm working on three nice prints right now. Um, and, and so when I work with Frank, I do all the limited edition stuff. Um, and even, even like the first time I did a limited edition print, I felt like an artist. i and, and the first time that somebody bought one at my asking price and, w w and they're not a lot, but when they paid what I asked, I felt like an artist, you know? So to have a team like that and, you know, um, I don't know, uh, I was telling a friend of mine today, like, I don't, I don't like to give unsolicited advice, but if I would, I would, I would suggest that, you know, my photographer friends or artist friends connect with a great printer, uh, connect with a great framer, because that stuff is going to just elevate yours, you know? And there have been shows that I've done where I've done like all unique frames, you know, uh, metallic prints, but then each frame gets like its own color. Each print is kind of like individual you know, so that's like creating on top of creating. Um, but I'm so thankful for both, you yeah. know, Frank and Mike to, yeah. um, uh, that I have them in my corner helping me out, Dude, making a, my stuff look good. Yeah. I mean, you're already making your stuff look good, thank but you, thank to you. see it in person though, it's, it's different, right? Than yeah. seeing it on your phone. Oh no, yeah, for sure. So Cause awesome. it, it comes to life. And there are so many times where, you know, you take a nice photo and you just, you want to print it. You want to see it. Right. You want to print it large and maybe you don't always have like a buyer or a home for it to go. But you want to see it, and you know when people. Then, like I said, I, I keep my stuff. I keep my prices low because right. I'm so uh, appreciative of people wanting to own my stuff. That let, let's do it. Let, you know, yeah. let, let's create. Um, but yeah, when I get to like, so these pieces that I'm working on, they're all two by three feet. You know, twenty four by thirty six inches plus the frame. They're going to be some nice size, yeah. and I want to see the customer's face when she sees. Like, I, I'm pretty sure she knows. Like, I'm not going to just bring her stuff that I framed up myself, right. that I printed myself. Like, I'm going to bring, side. yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm bringing you some, like, it's legit. Like, it's like one inch on the bottom and then, like, two <laughs> yeah, on the top. And 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 like, yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, I, I, you know, I, I like that, and I appreciate that because these guys make my stuff look the best it can, you know. Um, but, I, I, but I've been working with Mike, and so that's that's another thing that I learned. When I was at the working at the library, and the first time that I was going to display my photos, uh, I connected with Mike on Twitter. And Mike said, hey, I'm just starting up my shop. Why don't you come through? Oh, I'll, I'll, for, I'll match your stuff for you. Yeah. And I had no idea about matting. But, you know, I, I went down there. I took him like maybe six photos, matted them up. A couple of days later, I went back to the library, put them on display, and just matting them made a huge difference. Right. You know, and yeah. then working with him to frame them made a difference. Yeah. That's why you're all critical on, on my Elote photo I behind like, you. No, I love that. I, I <laughs> like you. the framing. I like the, the, I mean, the photo, it's of the composition. I like Thank the, 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 the contrast. Thanks. You know? But I, I saw you looking That's at the art. frame, though. Yeah. You're like, oh, these mats, two inches. No, well, so yeah, I've learned, I know, a, I little I learned right. a little bit. I've learned a little bit about right. the sizing and stuff right. like that. Right. Yeah. You, you no, it's not that I know while. two inches when I see two inches, <laughs> but I, I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> Ah, uh, fatherhood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it only gets worse, huh? Oh, um, nah, so, man, it gets better. Yeah. It, it's, um, and then, you know, that's why, I, even when you tell me, uh, like Antonio sleeping and, and stuff like that, man. Like uh, it's beautiful. Uh, when oh, you were talking cool. about that, you know, he didn't sleep much like last night, and you were up. You know, mm -hmm. enjoy it. You yeah. know, and I know people tell you that all the time. You know, but life goes by fast. You know, and um, and so yeah. So now having a grandson, I get to I get to do things a little better. I get to hopefully be a better. Yeah. You know, and so my goal with my grandson, like I had, I had two good grandfathers. One one is still here, but I didn't I didn't feel like. I had that one-on-one -on -one connection with either of them. They're, they're both great men, but I want to be the best grandfather that King has ever known and that I've never known. That's awesome. You know? Um, so that's my goal. 
Um, not to give him everything he wants, but right. to be that grandpa. Right. You know, and right. to be, you know, the best dad that I can be for my kids. Because even now, when they call me dad, you know, um, that feels so good. You know, even like, hey, dad, like, oh, you know, I right. jump at it, you know. Right. Uh, that makes you go. That makes you go. So, <clears throat> I mean, with, I mean, you know, there's a weird transition. Right? <laughs> That's all good. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're on, we're on the clock. Life-wise, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think you you have a situation that you you've been living with. Oh yeah, that has kind of accelerated. Um, that involves you know your body kind of shutting down, not functioning at a hundred percent. Yes, we do that with age, but I think yours is a little bit. Different. Yeah. Uh, so I was about five years old. Uh, my dad was thirty, and he he uh, he was going through some you know um, health issues, and he went to the doctor, and they diagnosed him with. Uh, uh, polycystic kidney disease. Uh, he was 30 years old and um, they said, well, it's a genetic thing. So you might want to test your kids and, and see, you know, so I, I ended up having it. And so I found out at five, you know, he was 30. I was five years old. They said, well, um, it's going to affect you later on in life. Try to stay away from salt. Try to stay away, you know, not too many eggs. Um, no. So the thing with the, with the polycystic kidney disease, it's you have cysts on your kidneys that over time will take over your kidneys, right? And destroy the, the function. When you have polycystic kidney disease, you're more susceptible to hypertension, and then in turn is high blood pressure. And when you have high blood pressure, that's even worse on your kidneys. So you know it's a it's an ugly circle there. Um, and so, I think uh, the year like 2017, I, um, I had an aneurysm. Um, I, I the first time that I felt like I had vertigo, I had never felt that before. Went to the hospital. They said, well, you know. According to a scan, an MRI that you had done years ago and today, well, it looks like, you know, you have a, an aneurysm. We're going to relieve that. So at that point, 2017, my kidney function was around 50 percent, you know, and I don't know if it was just because I had all that other stuff going on that I didn't pay attention to the 50 percent. Fast forward a few more years. Last year, they told me in July that I was at 30 percent. When they told me 30 percent, I was like a, a huge, you know, just like. A ton like uh, just a huge weight like just dropped on me like right. I'm sure you can receive worse news and I'm not you know but it was like oh man you know they said uh, we the doctor was like maybe in about two years or so you're gonna need to be on dialysis um, oh. at that point we're gonna put you on the kidney donor list right. um, so you know my dad went through this you know 1995 he was about 42 years old he got a, a transplant he was on dialysis for two years and then his brother you know jumped in gave him his kidney uh, so my dad, and by the time he started dialysis, he was saying like, well, maybe somebody dropped the ball. They must have, because I was down to 7% kidney function by the time they put me on dialysis. In my case, they say, well, when you hit 20%, that's when we'll put you on. So he says, oh, 20%, you'll be good. You know, you're, you don't worry. You're going to be fine. It's easy to hear, you know, it's easy for somebody who's been through it to say right. it, right. but, and I'm not too scared about it right now. When I heard the 30%, I was like, it was like the end of the world, right. you know, but I, I know it wasn't, but. Um, it was just hard to hear. And even the doctor's like, I know it's, it's tough, but, um, so 30% last July, this past February, I was at 26% and I'm like, man, I'm getting closer to, to right, 20, you know, right. they signed me up for a dialysis class, right. see what my, my, uh, options are. If I want to do it at home, if I want to go to center, right. uh, May came and they want me to test every three months to do my labs. May came, I went up 2%, uh, just in August, uh, last month I went down 2%. So anyway, from February to, to now I'm still at 26%. So my doctor just called me today and said, hey, we're going to uh, schedule you for a visit in December when you take your next labs. So I'm just taking it three months at a time. In right. um, my future will be uh, dialysis. I'm, I'm uh, you know, not to think negative. My dad says, I think negative. He says, if, if you think like that, you're blocking people's prayers. You're blocking people's blessings. Right. You know, so I, I take that into consideration. But I also just try to be like realistic. OK, this is going to be you know, what I'm have to go through. Uh, the, the class that they sent me to was like one, one guy on there saying, uh, you know, I got to pick up my laundry or my dry cleaning. I got to go to, I have to go to dialysis. I have to go get groceries. To, it's just a part of your routine now. Right. It's just something you have to do. Right. So it's going to be something I have to do. Um, and I'll kind of like cross that bridge mm -hmm. when I get there. I do try to fit in gym time. I do try to, um, does that put that off? Does that kind of push back the time or it was. So they said that, you know, pretty much um, your, your, your function is going to drop roughly 7% yearly, you know. Um, wow. But drinking a lot of water, right. you know, lowering your blood pressure will help a little. But 
you can still expect seven. And so I don't, I don't know how much it's going to help, but uh, I'm not trying to like give up and just be like, okay, just, you know, now get I'm sad for, for taking you to Altura and making you sweat. My bad. <laughs> no, I, so now I, I do try to keep water on me. Right. I, I do try right. to do, you know, better. Uh, Sophia loves water. She doesn't drink anything else. Uh, and I, I love, I love that. Yeah. Um, so I try to drink more. Um, do does she understand uh, how do you bring this up to your kid i mean do you yet i i, I mean you're taking it pretty it seems like you're taking it pretty yeah easy. i i, I want to just be like you know what i'll, I'll cross right. that bridge when i get there right. um not that i'm like giving up hope or anything like right. that but i'm not gonna let it you know uh, for the for a couple of days no for sure for a couple of days last july when they gave me that news i'm looking it up and it's like oh people don't last oh, because california's got like the longest wait time it's like for eight to kidney. twelve years for a, for a kidney transplant, you know, and so that wasn't good to read. Uh, looking at how long people last on dialysis was not was not good to read, but um, you know, all but what on the flip side, what 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 was helpful was uh, people putting their stories out there, and so little by little, I've started to do that um, because it's helped me. I've seen younger people, you know, early twenties who need transplants, and they've got positive attitudes and they're like i'm gonna get this transplant yeah you know so i'm like who am i to be feeling down or whatever you know i yeah. gotta be like that and, and also man you never know you could put it out there and it's happened where people like just step up on social media hey man you can have my kidney if i match or whatever you know yeah. you never know anybody listening to this podcast um, <laughs> let's get tested you have a kidney <laughs> you've got a kidney you're not really using yeah if you're you know if it's not busy <laughs> yeah um Hit us up. Yeah. Hit up Art. You know where to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to use that one again. Yeah. 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 yeah we, nah. If you nah, can send that it, through, that'd be But great. it's, you know, it's, it, it, one, it's worth a shot, you know. But, but two, it might help someone to, to share my story. You know, just like it's helped me to see people. Uh, there was a page that I, I found on, like, PKD, you know, warriors, you know, uh, polycystic kidney disease. And they're talking about, are you a, a survivor? Are you a warrior? Or are you a donor? What was your experience like? And, you know, people were like, oh, man, I, I'm two years. I, I've, I've had this new kidney and I'm feeling great. And, you know, so there's some optimism. There's some hope. And, and that's always good. Right. But, um, it, like, you know, I just got into the it's going to be what it's going to be. I'm not feeling down about it. I'll try to do what I can to keep me above 20 percent. But, you know, I, hey, it, it might be my future that I, I'll hit that 20 percent and then. When I, w when I do, I'll, I'll make those changes, right. you know. Right. So also trying to get out and shoot now. Also trying to get out and take little trips and vacation now because I might be stuck to a dialysis machine for a couple of years, you know. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Until somebody comes up with that Until kidney. Until uh, some, yeah, yeah, somebody has that, that kidney, kidney that they want to put to work. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you, you know, you, you, you're... You're an amazing human being. Oh, I'm man, glad we you. finally got this done. Thank you. Um, it's not a task that had to be done. It was just, I've, I've wanted to talk to you on a podcast for a long time. And finally, we got it done. Thank you, man. Um, I want to thank you for being here, um, for, you know, taking the time to come through, chill out, talk shop. No, I, I thank and talk you. talk parenting. Um, but before you go, you got to do one more thing. What are we doing? Um, this is a, this is a kind of sort of a, it's like a photo, right? There's a. There's a story, there's, there's, but you can speak here, right? More than a photo can. Uh, I want you to, to, to leave a footprint for your kids. Um, leave them a message. Tell them something that you don't think they haven't heard, something you think that they should hear. You're make me cry already. Something they, they, they should understand. Um, they have access to this, you know? They look up your name, this could pop up. Well, I just... You know, you just day to day. I want them to know that I'm d uh, doing the best that I can. Um, I love them all so much, um, and and I hope to learn. I, I hope that um, you know the father that I was 20 years ago is is not the father that I am today. And I hope that I'll be better, you know, as I old because we constantly learn. But um, I don't know if I can say that I've done the best that I can because we could always do better and we could always learn new things. Um, but, um, I, lo I love them very much. Um, and I'll always try to do my best for them. And, um, just having them, like I said, just having them call me dad is, is, uh, it means the world to me. And, and same goes for you, King. Uh, you know, uh, when he says grandpa, um, doesn't exactly sound like grandpa yet, but when he does, 
Oh, man, it just, and I think as I get older, I just get more sensitive. Like with my kids, uh, just thoughts of them make me cry, but like in good ways, you know. Uh, but uh, I just, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, I, I hope that they know that I love them very much and that I tried to do the best that I could. Armessa, Chicano Soul, thank you so much, dude. Thank you, I appreciate you. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Special thanks to our guests and listeners. Feel free to reach out on all our ads, suggest some topics, leave some feedback, or just drop a hello. Remember, you're never alone, Dad. This has been the Creative Dad Pod.